Hello, I'm Nazia Zadi, Product Manager for Oracle Audit Vault and Database Firewall. Oracle Audit Vault and Database Firewall (ABDF) provides a strong policy alerting and reporting engine to detect, alert, and prevent data breaches. Today, with me, learn how to prevent and get answers for what, when, where, and who has accessed your critical asset, that is data. Hackers are interested in your data and they can use many actors like the trusted users through applications or even come directly to attack your database. That is why access to data should be monitored and is strongly controlled. Early detection is critical to minimize the data loss. Oracle Database Security follows the philosophy of trust but verifies. With this philosophy, Oracle Audit Vault and Database Firewall (ABDF) is designed to provide database activity monitoring to secure your critical data. Oracle ABDF is a powerful tool and helps you to get answers to the questions we raised previously by the five most essential use cases: monitoring privilege user activity, block any improper or unauthorized access understand what happened after an incident so that you can take quick action alert on any suspicious or unseen activity and finally simplify audit of the standard regulatory compliance oracle avdf works with not only most databases but also collects audit data from various operating systems and directory services You can also extend ABDF to other audit data sources. Now let's start with our use cases to achieve enterprise class detection and prevention capability in a heterogeneous environment. Firstly, we need to know what is happening in our databases, monitor the activity of different types of users, whether privileged or common application users. We also want to make our post incident investigation quick and accurate. Once we have better visibility of our databases, we need to create a trusted path for our authorized users and take appropriate action if the user is not coming from the trusted path. We also want to get notified if there is a malicious activity done by any user whether internal or external for example is there any data exfiltration attempt on my database once we have put the notification process in place now we want to protect the database from any unauthorized access attempts and sql injection and finally we want to make governance reporting simple and less time consuming let's move to the oracle avdf solution and configure each use case one by one let's start with the first use case of monitoring and investigate the post incident impact in this use case we will see what activity is happening on my registered database server We have registered one Oracle database which is PDB1 for audit data collection as well as for database firewall monitoring. Now we will go to the reports and see who is doing what, when, where and how. Oracle AVDF provides a strong reporting engine. You can have a multiple reports. We have activity report. There are different categories in activity report like summary, data access modification, login logout you will also have entitlement report database firewall reports stored procedure changes report as well as database vault activity report now let's look at our all activity report all activity reports provides you reporting where different users are doing different activities on your system you can reset this report with the default values which we provide by default now we will see there are different users doing different activity on my system 
Today, I'm interested in my one of the privileged user, which is a db underscore Debra and see what exactly she is doing on my system. I can see that there are the updates happening by dba underscore debra on my sensitive object which is demo underscore hr underscore employees. In AVDF, you can select other required columns for further investigation. I will go ahead and select other columns like I want to know which client program is she using for updating my sensitive object. I also want to know what exactly query is she running on my system. In other conditions, I also want to know what are the row counts has been returned for select queries. I will go ahead, select these columns and apply. Now you will see DBA underscore Debra is updating demo underscore HR employees directly through SQL, SQL plus and this is the run command. This is the update command she has run on my database, which is PDB1. You can click on this paper icon and have the further details on this particular activity. We'll go back to the report view. Now further, I want to know if there was any SQL injection attack, for example, happen on my database server. Oracle AVDF, you can go and you can filter this report with different conditions. So today I'm interested in knowing if there was SQL injection on my system. I will go and I will say command text contains. We all know there's a famous single quote union command or a statement can be used for SQL injection. So let's see if there is any such statement ran on my PDB1 database. You will see this is my application user, which is employee search underscore prod, is basically running certain union commands and trying to access sensitive data through my sensitive object tables, which is demo underscore HR underscore employees. Now, further, I want to know if there was any data exfiltration attempt on my database. For that, I, I can go and filter on the row counts. And for example, I will say that a statement where row count is greater than 200. And you will see the same application user, there are more than 200 rows being selected directly through the database uh, SQL plus with these are not a normal behavior on my database systems. So with today's investigation, we could identify three abnormal behavior on my database system. One is that DB underscore Debra is directly updating my sensitive object. Second is that there was a SQL injection attack on my database. The third was there was a data exfiltration attempt on my database for my sensitive object. We will now create the trusted path for our authorized users and get alerted if the user is not coming from a trusted path. Remember, my privileged user has updated sensitive object directly from SQL plus to avoid such situation and quickly identify such activity. We will create a trusted path policy in database firewall. We will also create audit alert policy for trusted path. First, let's go to the policies database firewall policy. Here, first we will create a sets or a profile for my trusted path. If you look at, I have created a trusted IP address, which is my application server IP address. Then my trusted DB user sets, which includes employee search underscore prod, and then database client set, which is my JDBC thin client. My profile looks like this any employee profile or a trusted connection, when my trusted users are connecting through trusted IP address or application server IP address 
through application that's my trusted connection now let's go and create a rule basis on these sets i have created i will create a session context rule where i will i say if ip address is not part of a trusted ip address and a db user is not a trusted user and the client set is also not a trusted client set then the action should be passed but you log always i have already deployed this policy we will go and cross check again you will see database firewall policy is trusted path policy now the next step we will go to the alerts and we will define alert policies my trusted path alert policy looks like this where i have mentioned that my if the client ip address is not application server ip address and the client program is not basically application client program and the event is update whether it is a user employee search prod or a D, dba underscore debra i want to get notified and alerted both now let's look at our alert report how it looks like you will see there are the alerts created when dba underscore debra and employee search underscore prod is trying to connect and do certain activity on my database let's investigate this here you will see everything looks fine where db underscore debra is connecting through my correct ip address or a trusted client ip address on my object now let's see what is the problem the problem is my trusted client is jdbc connection which is my application connection however debra is directly connecting to sql plus and doing update command on my sensitive object which is demo underscore hr underscore employees now let's look at database firewall reports as well we will go down click on database firewall reports you will see employee search prod is trying to run certain command on my database through ip address and which is directly not from the trusted application which is my jdbc thin client hence creating a trusted path is very important part for your avdf once you have created trusted path you can quickly identify if your privileged user or application user are connecting to your application from the trusted path or they are deviating from the trusted path now let's learn how we can create alerts with different conditions oracle avdf also monitors returned rows by sql query in this use case we will configure the policy and alert which can detect and prevent data exfiltration attempts in this use case we will identify if there is any data exfiltration attempt on my database remember when we were investigating our database pdb1 we found that there were data exfiltration attempt on the database now we will put database firewall policy where we will define if user is accessing more rows than the usual then alert and log such activity we will also define alert policy for the same to do that let's click on policies database firewall policy i will create a exfiltration attempt policy on my pi data i will click on the rule database objects and create a rule where i will define if the, if user is doing dml as well as select or read only dmls then i want to capture number of rows written for select query on my selected tables which are demo hr employees 
demo HR supplemental data as well as if demo HR employees been accessed by application user. My action would be pass. However, if the condition is true, I want to log in always and my severity threat level would be moderate. Now let's go and deploy this policy on my database firewall. We will click database firewall PDB1 and we will select our PI exfiltration monitor policy and deploy this policy. My next step would be I will go and create alert policy for same behavior. I will go and create alert policy which is PI exfiltration alert. I will give a condition if row count is greater than 100 and the target object is like demo underscore HR. Remember demo HR is my sensitive object where I want to get notified if user is accessing more than 100 rows. Once I have put all these policies, I have run certain queries in the backend. Let's look at the reports and see what's been captured by database firewall. To do that, I will go to the database firewall reports, database firewall monitored activity. Since we want to look at return rows, I will go and select a column where I will get the row count value. Further down, I will click filter and I will put a condition if row count is greater than 100 because this is what we have defined in our policy. You will see that employee search prod, which is my application user, is trying to select more rows than usual through direct SQL plus client. If you want to investigate further, you can click on this paper icon and you will see what exactly happening with more details like event status is successful and policy name was PI exfiltration monitor because that's the policy we have deployed and you can see entire command text etc. Now our next step would be we will go to the alerts and see if there is an alert generated for that. What we will do, we will go and filter my alert policies by PI exfiltration alert. Here you will see that alert policy PI exfiltration alert is capturing the activity that user is doing which is employee search underscore prod on my target PDB1. For further detail, you can click on paper icon. You can see what was the condition we have defined, which is if user is accessing more than 100 rows on my sensitive object, which is demo underscore HR underscore employees. And that's what exactly the event you can see here. And it was a successful event. For further detail, you can click on paper icon. This way you can define database firewall policy and alert policy to identify if there is any data exfiltration attempt happening on your database. With AVDF, you can also profile an application's SQL by creating a group of known SQLs to add to your allow list and block deviations. You can keep on training your database firewall engine to what should be allowed and what should be blocked. Let's configure a use case where AVDF will identify SQL injection attempts to the application and protect subsequently. Remember in our investigation, we found out there was a SQL injection attack on my database. For this, we will go to our application and try to run a query and see what exactly happening on my application. I will just on my debug mode so that we can see the SQL query running behind my application. And you will see this is the normal SQL query which is running behind my um, application. And these are my 
employee records which are displayed through this application. Now let's try to do SQL injection on my application. Again, I will click on debug mode, create search. Here now you will see there is a union statement behind my application which has concatenated with my normal SQL. And in return of this union command, under department and city column, user is getting sensitive information like account number and routing number. Now we have to put a database firewall policy so that such activity cannot happen on my application. We will go to the audit vault uh, database firewall console, click on policies, click on database firewall policy and we will create a SQL injection policy. Here in this policy, we will create a allow list of SQLs and if anything which is not part of my known SQL or allow list of SQL, I would like to block such SQL. For that, I will create on set slash profiles. On under SQL cluster set, I will create my allowed HR SQL cluster. You can select whichever SQLs you want to make or a known SQL you want to make part of your allowed list. For example, if you see there are some, some malicious SQLs like uh, where row num is smaller than zero. These are the or user is trying to create or select a social security number and expiry from the my sensitive object which is demo underscore hr underscore employee so i will not select such kind of a uh, sqls and i will create select only my allowed list of sqls and create my hr sql cluster now let's go back and create a rule basis on this cluster set we have created we will go to the sql statement we will select my allow SQL cluster and I will say that action is passed. So whenever my allow list is, is, is generating from application or directly to the database, I want to pass those action, do not want to log. Now go to the default rule where I'm saying if anything which is not part of my uh, allowed list I want to block and I want I would create a substitute SQL where the return row will be zero. So user cannot be able to see any data from not allowed SQLs and these logging will be one per session. Now let's go back and deploy this policy on my database firewall target. We will go to database firewall target and we will select and we will deploy my SQL injection policy here. Now let's go back to the HR application here. What we will try to do is that we will run a normal query again. You will see this is the normal query which is coming and it is showing a normal behavior all employee records been selected now let's try to again put a sql injection union query and see what exactly happens here now you see because we said that this particular query was not list of my allowed query so connection is blocked and user cannot see any data because we have substituted with the where class one is equal to two, which is always not true. Now let's go back to AV console and look at the reports. We will investigate AV, uh, we will investigate database firewall report. Now let's first look at database firewall monitoring activity reports. You will see that my 
application user, which is employee search underscore prod, is trying to connect and run certain command and it's been captured here. We will go to the block statement command and see if what all been is blocked is being logged here. You will see here all the union commands being blocked and logged in my database firewall reporting blocked statements. Now finally, let's make governance reporting simpler and less time consuming. We will configure EU GDPR specific reports from the database perspective. Here in this report, we will use the result from the database security assessment tool DBSAT collection job to identify the sensitive data with the pluggable database PDB1. For ease of use, we have already uploaded sensitive object data collected from DBSAT report that is PDB1 underscore DBSAT underscore discovery dot CSV. Now we will log out from AV admin user. We will log in to AV auditor user. Let's go to the reports. Click on compliance report. Here you will see AVDF provides a different category of compliance reports like EU GDPR, PCI, IRS, uh, Sarbanes Oxley and HIPAA and there are many more. We will look at EU GDPR reports. Now you can select on which target you want to run this report. We have selected PDB1 Oracle database as our EU GDPR target. Let's click on the sensitive data report. This is one of the requirement from EU GDPR compliance. Here we, you see we are collecting different um, categories like target, schema name, object, object type, column name, and sensitive type. You will see that there are the schema, employee search underscore dev, and the object name is demo underscore HR underscore employees. Now let's go back to the compliance report again and see who all are accessing these sensitive data. Click on the activity on sensitive data report. You will see there are different users like sys user, db underscore debra and employee search underscore prod are accessing the sensitive object which has a sensitive column data. We will filter with one of the user and look at what activity this particular user has been doing on this sensitive column. There are the select happening on these uh, objects by employee search underscore prod user. Similarly, you can have, you can look at different reports in under EU GDPR category or you can look at in other category like PCI DSS. With complete 360 degree coverage, including network and database activity auditing, with near zero false positives based on SQL statement parsing, not based on regular expressions, and having rich reporting, analytics, and alerting that can be easily extended and integrated with other solutions like SIM, ticketing system, or business analytics solutions like OBI, for almost anything that produces an audit trail, like databases, but not limited to Oracle, non-Oracle databases like IBM DB2, SQL Server, Postgres, or even MongoDB, along with the auditing of various operating systems and even directory services, you can achieve differentiated security with Oracle Audit Vault and database files. Oracle AVDF provides tons of more features than what we just talked about. To know more about Oracle Audit Vault and Database Firewall, you can visit Database Security homepage. If you want to try out the use cases we have just discussed, please visit Live Labs Guided Workshop. For questions related to Oracle AVDF, you can reach out to me at my given email address. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was useful 
and will help you implement your Oracle AVDF effectively and efficiently.